Hey everyone, this is Ursulon with End Times Bible Hope. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Today we're going to be discussing the fifth trumpet of Revelation. If you haven't already, please like this video, give it, uh, share it, subscribe it. And also, before we watch, get into this fifth trumpet, you need to go back and watch the previous videos. So far, I'm doing a series, we've covered the first four trumpets, and then we looked at Revelation 11, because 11 provides a framework and a structure to even understand the fifth trumpet. So if, you, if you've just come here, you need to go back and catch up, do some catching up before you watch this, so please do that. And uh, just as a recap, chapter 11 provided a framework and a, a summary of the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth trumpet. And we're gonna see that as we get into the fifth trumpet, you see the beast from the bottomless pit. The same beast from the bottomless pit that it was in chapter 11. And we pointed out then that that was the, that was France coming up to wage war on the two witnesses who were the Old and New Testaments. That is what the fifth trumpet is. And we're gonna go through this verse by verse and hopefully we, it will make sense as we, as we go, we can kind of put these pieces together. So let's just jump right into verse one. Then the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star the NIV and most newer translations say had fallen, fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Now remember this in chapter 11, we, we read about the beast from the bottomless pit in reference to France, as we already said. And that verse is in chapter 11. When they finish their testimony, the beast that ascends out of the bottomless pit will wage war against them, overcome them, and kill them again that beast being france coming up out of the bottomless pit verse 2 and he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace so the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power Ephesians 2 verse 2 tells us that Satan is referred to as the prince of the power of the air. It's also notable that darkness became notorious in Egypt during the 10th plague. Revelation 11 refers to this place as spiritually Egypt. So we see a striking similarity between the darkness taking place in the fifth trumpet and that which will happen in Revelation 11 referring to Egypt. There is an intimate connection here between the darkness in Egypt and also the reference to Egypt in chapter 11. In Nahum, we see that the locusts are in fact a reference to a great army. Your commanders are like swarming locusts and your generals like great grasshoppers. The shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. So here we have a mention of locusts in reference to an army, specifically the army of Assyria. The reference to scorpions can be none other than a reference to Satan and his angels. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse four, they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God in their foreheads. The reference to, to green things and vegetation here and the grass and the trees and those who have the seal of God on their foreheads can only be a reference to the people of God. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord for he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river. And it will not fear when he comes, but its leaf will be green. Those who receive the seal of God receive the Holy Spirit of God. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So here we have, just as a quick recap, a bottomless pit is opened up. France comes out of this bottomless pit 
in the form of locusts, which the Bible refers to as commanders and generals. We have a nation, a kingdom rising up, uh, and we see their power being manifested through the armies, the generals, and, and the commanders. And they're not commanded to hurt anyone who has the seal of God. And we had mentioned before that this was the de-Christianization of France in the fifth trumpet, which Revelation 11 tells us. But those who have the seal of God on their foreheads, who know the truth, were not going to be swept away by these errors of atheism and the errors of, of the, the thinking at that time. Verse 5, And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment like was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. It's very interesting here. Scorpions are not allowed to kill anyone, only to torment them. To torment them through the rise of atheism. When we go back to this five-month period, five months, according to Bible prophecy, when we break this down, would actually be a period of 150 years using the day for a year principle. That 150 years, it's very interesting when we look at Rene Descartes' first discourse on method published in 1637. Five months, 150 years later, would bring us to the year 1787. When we look at that date, the French Revolution is said to have began in 1789. But when you look at the Encyclopedia Britannica, 1787 was the date when we begin to see the conflict emerge, exactly 150 years after René Descartes published his Discourse on Method, where man beginning to be tormented by this, this seed of enlightenment. I think, therefore I am. This was a rebellion from God, and in a sense, elevating man to the level of deity. Verse 6, In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. When Solomon, who was given all wisdom from God, when he began to let the greed and the wealth and, and the women uh, come into his life and cloud out, the, cloud out God, when he began to walk as a heathen, he experiences the same thing, being separated from God and finding no finding trying to find fulfillment in monetary things in in life and in, in women and the result is he wants to die whatever my eyes desired i did not keep from them i did not withhold my heart from any pleasure for my heart rejoiced in all my labor for there is no more remembrance of the wise than of the fool forever since all that now is will be forgotten in the days to come and how does a wise man die as the fool Therefore I hated life, because the work that was done under the sun was distressing to me, for all is vanity and grasping for the wind. Solomon experienced the same experience, trying to find hope, pleasure, joy in worldly things. And the result was he was eternally being separated from God through this. He was, in a sense, becoming an atheist. And because of this, he wanted to die. Verse 7. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like woman's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth, and they had breastplates like breastplates of iron. And the sounds of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. Here John is drawing off a parallel, a symbolism that we find in Joel chapter 2. Again, it's a reference to armies. The people come, great and strong, the like of whom has never been. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like swift steeds, so they run with a noise like chariots. Over mountain tops they leap, like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. So we see here this reference again to they have women's hair, they have faces of men. It is a reference to an army coming up in a sense, to de-Christianize France and complete rebellion against God. And we see, and we're going to see that the scorpion is a symbol of rebellion. Verse 10. They had tails like scorpions and their stings was in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. 
the scorpion is very interesting because the scorpion uses its tail, as it says, to sting men and to torment them for five months. The tail in the Bible is a symbol of the lies. The elder and honorable, he is the head. The prophet who teaches lies, he is the tail. Revelation 12 tells us about Satan, the great dragon, drawing a third of the angels in heaven to earth with him through his tail. He uses the tail to speak lies. In John chapter 8, Jesus said that Satan was the murderer and the father of lies because he was a liar from the beginning. So we see, so we see that the tail here is being used to communicate lies. Lies that torment men through thinking, I think therefore I am, through denying of God, through a rebellious spirit. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you and you dwell among scorpions. Notice what the scorpions are. Do not be afraid of their words or dismayed by their books, though they are a rebellious house. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. The scorpion was a symbol of rebellion. Satan, again, being a symbol of the first rebellious one in heaven, using lies, the tail, to sweep a third of the angels to earth with him. Verse 11, And they, that, and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. In, in Jesus describing the thief, he says, The thief does not come to except to steal and to kill and destroy. This Abaddon and Apollyon is the word used for destroyer. And here we see a picture of the thief as the one who comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. This can be none other, the scorpions, the, the, you know, the symbolism to rebellion, to their leader, Apollyon, and even this, this uh, one who's opening the key to the bottomless pit. This can be none other than a reference to Satan emerging through this bottomless pit using friends and atheism and a complete rejection and denial of God and even the reference to darkness in this fifth trumpet where it completely clouds out the sun. The sun being a reference to Christ, again, go back and watch the fourth trumpet video where Jesus is a symbol of the sun. Now the air, the power of the air, Satan is the symbol, of, is the prince of the power of the air that occludes, blocks out the sun, Jesus Christ. And he uses France the French Revolution and um, principles of you know philosophy and atheism to completely, in a sense, rebel against God. And the way we know this, again, contextually, is by studying Revelation chapter 11, because Revelation 11 tells us that this beast from the bottomless pit was France, who waged war on the two witnesses, the Old and New Testament. Well, I hope this message has been a blessing for you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, please take a minute also to share. Many people need to hear these messages. And next time we will come back and cover the structure and the sixth trumpet in, in Revelation chapter 10. Uh, have a blessed week and look forward to it next time, friends. Thanks.